Hello and welcome to the script control tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the Playmaker actions that you can use to control some of the non-Playmaker scripts in your Unity project. So the scene that we have here is just a cube, right? And just has this blue material on it. And what I want to do is call a method from a script. So I'm going to take this call method example script. I'm going to put it on my cube. OK, so you can see we have it over here. And this is what's on the script. OK, so essentially we have this change color to green method. And all it's really going to do is get that renderer on our object and change its color to green. But there's nothing really calling that method, right? It's just here's the method by itself. So what we can do is add an FSM and we could put in a call method action. You can see right here that it's asking for the behavior itself, which is just our call method example script. I can drag and drop it in here. Uh, you can also use a variable. So if you so if you wanted to programmatically get the specific behavior here and store it in a variable, you can use that too. But for this example, I'm just gonna drag and drop it in here. Okay, and you'll see that once it is selected, we can use this drop down for the method. We have our change color to green. Okay, so I'm gonna select that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off this FSM. So when I play this, you'll see that we have our blue cube, but as soon as I come over to turn on this FSM, it should run this call method action and turn this green. So here we go, I'm gonna enable this FSM. And there you go, right? Simple enough, it just calls it. So that's when we're calling a specific behavior, right? When we have this uh, method on the game object, right? But another thing that we could do is if I just go ahead and remove that, right? So now it'll just stay blue no matter what. I'm gonna create a, a game object. We'll call this our color manager. And we're gonna give it an FSM. And this time we're gonna give it a call static method. In here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the static method from our call static method example. In here, we have the class, which is call static method example. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in the class name. OK, so that's what we have. And the method name is change color to green static. Right. So it's basically the same thing, but just static. Now we need to set a parameter here because you can see that this method requires a game object. Right. So the game object that it's using, it ends up using this variable down here to get the component and actually set the color to green, right? So we're gonna change our parameter to one, right? Cause we're only specifying one parameter. If there was multiple parameters, you could just type in, you know, if it was like a game object, a color and an int value or whatever. But for this example, it's only the one and it is a game object. So I'm gonna say that it's our cube. So I'm gonna drag and drop that in our cube. Now remember all this is happening on a separate game object, our color manager, which is just an empty that has this FSM on it, right? So this is a way of us being able to call a static method, which isn't dependent on an instance of a game object. And then just to prevent a little error, we don't have any output results from this, but just to prevent an error. I'm going to say that this is a game object. And now if I turn this off, right, we're going to do the same thing as last time. And I hit play. We start with this blue cube. But as soon as I enable this FSM, it's going to use this call static method. It's going to be targeting our cube game object. It's going to be calling this method from this class, right? So here we go. I'm going to Hit enable, and sure enough, it turns it green. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Okay, and on here, evoke. I'm gonna create a new FSM on this, and I'm gonna put in an invoke method. And I'm gonna put our invoke method example here on the same game object. Our invoke method example script just has a method that sends this uh, string to the debug log. Okay, it'll just say method invoked. So in here, you can see that our invoke method it's looking on this game object. So now we could use this drop down to find a behavior. We'll say that it's the invoke method example. And the method name is my method. See, this is my method, which will do this. What's nice is that we have like a delay here, a repeat and a repeat delay and all that kind of stuff, which is kind of cool. So what we'll do is we'll say that there will be a uh, one second delay and it will repeat and the repeat delay will also just be a second. OK, so what we should see is if I pop over to console over here, we should see a bunch of method invoked text popping up over here once a second. Okay, so again, turning off this FSM, pressing play, and as soon as I enable this FSM, we should see the console getting filled up. Okay, there you go. And you can see that this number is climbing. These are all the amount of times that it's been invoked. And if I uncheck this repeating, and I hit play, and we enable this FSM. 
you can see it does still get invoked, but only the one time instead of repeating. The next one, we'll create an empty for, we'll call this our send message example. And on here, we're gonna put our send message example script, and we're gonna add an FSM in here called send message. This is our send message example script. We have this my message method, and it's just asking for a string variable called message, and it uses that to send a debug log. Again, you can imagine you know, being able to do plenty more here, but th for the sake of this example, it's really easy to just pop over a debug log message like this. Okay, so the send message action, it's looking for a script on this game object. We could also just as easily make it uh, some other empty, right, uh, from somewhere else, right? And we'll put an FSM on here, send message, and change this to say, okay, the script is actually on this game object, right? And it'll find the method there. Doesn't matter if you're using owner or, or some other game object. But the delivery is we're sending a message, okay? And the method is going to be our my message method. And the parameter is going to be a string, right? Because that's what this is here, the message string. And the string we're going to send is, hey, you there, world. And we'll pop over to the console, clear this out. And when I hit play, we get it over here. A, you there world. You get, so you could see that talking to scripts with these actions is very straightforward. Now, one of the easiest ways to control other scripts and components that aren't made with Playmaker, or even some that are made with Playmaker, to be honest, just any components and scripts, is by using the get and set property actions. This main camera game object has a camera component on it. It also has an audio listener component on it. So what I'm going to do is come over and just create an empty, and I'm going to say, this is like control camera. And we're going to add an FSM to this. I'm going to put a get component action on here. A get component action will just get a component that you're looking for. So for example, if I change this to our main camera that it's targeting, I can say that we want to store its camera component here in this variable. Now, what you need to do first is come over to variables and say that we want to create an object. An object is just any variable type, to be honest. In new variable, we're gonna put in our camera component. And right here where it says object type, this is where you can select literally all the things uh, available to you, right? But we know that our camera component is actually in the Unity engine. Now, by the way, this is a massive list and one of the best ways to navigate it is to just use your keyboard to type in the first letter of whatever it is that you're looking for. So even though I was like up here at the top, I could press U and every time I hit U, it just cycles through uh, the categories that start with U. So I can come down here to Unity Engine very quickly and then select Camera. Okay, and you can even see now that the value here has the little symbol for the camera and says nothing right now, but that's the type camera. Okay, so in our state, we have this get component, which is getting a component from our main camera. And the way that we're telling it what component we want from it is by just specifying the variable that we want to store it in, right? Which is camera component. The way you specify what you want is by just using the variable of that same type. Okay, that's what we've done here. We've said that we want this to get whatever camera component is on this main camera game object. So when I hit play, you can see that it returns it here. So we have our main camera, right? And you see that when I select it, it selects this game object, and this is the component that it's getting. Now, to show you that we're actually targeting this component, we can change some of these values here. So all of these values here are the properties of the component. So for example, we have our, our field of view, right? It's currently 60, but if we wanted to, on our camera control down here, say set property, we could put this action in here and setting a property will let us target the camera component. And it gives us now properties specific to this component type. So if you use this little drop down, it'll show you all of the properties of a camera component. And we know that we have our field of view here. So we could set the field of view to something like 10 instead. So what is it right now? Right now it's 60. When we hit play, this should turn to 10. There you go, okay? It goes the other way too. On our camera control, we could set the property, but we can also get the property. So I'm just gonna actually get rid of that. And I'm gonna say get property and we have to put it after it, right? It's very important that you 
put this in order because it needs to know what the component is before it does anything to it, right? So you get it first and then do stuff with it after. So the target game object here is the camera component and the property that we're looking for is the field of view and we're gonna store it as a float because that's what type of value it is. It's actually a float variable, right? So we're gonna say the new variable, we'll call this current FOV. I'll even check this as every frame and we'll hit play. So if I lock our Playmaker editor down here, go over to the camera, you can see that, yep, our camera is 60 and that's what it's returning over here. And as I adjust this, you can see that it's getting the new updated values as well. So these two are synced as I drag it up to 179, it also says 179 down here, okay? So it's constantly getting uh, that property because I'm running every frame. By the way, a uh, cool little tip is that if I just unlock this really quick, if you want to get the properties and set the properties of things, one of the easiest ways to do that is to just drag and drop the thing into the Playmaker editor right here where your actions go. So for example, I can add whatever, like a light component to this, right? And if I drag and drop this in here, you'll see that it asks me, well, first of all, it asks you if you wanna use some of these preset actions that already do stuff that are specific to that component, or you could use the get and set property. So I can set the property of this light and say that, okay, we want the intensity to be like super high, so it's a very bright light, okay? This is also available to you from other game objects. Uh, and all you have to do is just lock the editor and then go to the other game object, right? So now we're looking at the FSM from our control camera game object, but now we're looking at the inspector of our main camera game object, which means I can take this camera component and drop it into the FSM of our camera control. And again, have all these little presets of all the actions that already exist, or you can get and set property. So I'm gonna set the property of our orthographic. Okay, so it'll be true. All right, so it'll change this projection from perspective to orthographic. So when we play this, we should get a super bright light, and this should change from perspective to orthographic. Boom, there you go. And those are some of the basic ways that you can start controlling your scripts and other non-Playmaker components with Playmaker. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.